How you doing, my uh, good friends and neighbors? My family. You're my family. It's an awesome day. I, I'm just happy. Winter's starting to break. It's getting muddy. The snow melted here in the valley. Still got it on the top of the hills. Uh, now we're getting some rain. Uh, it's not raining right this second, but we're getting a little rain, so it's going to keep it muddy for a bit. We got cutting videos we have to make. I got saws I want to get shipped to you guys. I want you to see them uh, before we ship them. We want to run them all because it's fun and we like it. And uh, I made a video the other day when we took that CR500 apart. Uh, them videos on the bikes don't get as many views as what our normal mainstream does, like the cutting and the saw talk. We know that. And, uh, but it didn't do too bad, but the, the watch time is right. It's even less views. They watch it aren't nearly twice as long. So my, my watch time is still where it belongs. So we're going to continue with little projects. We're not going to show the bike stuff, you know, a lot. I got a KTM 250 two stroke that, uh, it's been a little labor of love over the last year off and on. And it's nearly done. I got. I got something you probably want to see what it is. When we got this bike, it was a builder. This is the way we bought it. It came out of Arizona from a, a dealer, and we shipped it here. And it's the right bike. It just plain, it's got all, everything exactly the best you can get. And, uh, but it needed to be built. It was time. One of the head bolts, where it goes into the cylinder, Right in here, on that, it don't have studs. It's just got a bolt. The, they should have had studs. I'm going to put stud, at least one stud in. I'll show you how to do that repair. Because they got them. They have just a, a rubber O-ring for a head gasket. One of them is all it takes to get that to leak a little water. Uh, so I didn't ride that last year. I did it once, and it broke my foot. It, uh, that, was a, that was a bad scene, man. In slippers, I was wearing overhauls and slippers, and uh, it was it was just a thing. Okay, I'm gonna jump right into this. Uh, you seen the 500 tore apart? If you didn't, you might want to look at that because there's chainsaw info. Uh, I'm what I've always been doing is trying to get you guys where you see things the same as I do, whether it's right or wrong. I want you to see where I'm coming from with these cylinders. You know, obviously 500, I mean, that's as big as a small block Chevy or small block Ford, you know. I mean, uh, that's quite a, you know, <laughs> compared to a chainsaw, you know. But if you missed that video and you truly want to learn about these saws and the two strokes and what makes them tick, I really like you guys to, and I'm not trying to plug the video. I don't care if you watch it or not. That's, that's, this is what we're all about. You do what you want here. You enjoy life, man. You you drive it home. That's what you do. But there's things you need to see. And I, and there was info in that video that you needed to see in a bigger cylinder to be able to understand how the two strokes work and the transfers from one thing to the other. Uh, there's the intake, reed cage. Yeah, they're pretty big compared to a saw, you know. Uh, even, though, even though the diameter, you know. There's, there's quite a, <coughs> quite a difference. It really is. But, okay. Let me explain first something about the CR500, and I'm going to tell you something about the saws that, that react the same. The 85 and the 86 CR500 was notorious for ping, spark knock, detonation, and there was reasons for that. Uh, they had a kind of a even though they were decent compression, really, they had uh, a poorly shaped cylinder. And uh, I should have took some video or clips and showed you the before and after. But you do this to chainsaws if you want, the same thing. And it will help. Now, you know I'm against polishing. Well, you can see this cylinder here. This is all done by hand. I reshaped. This whole area, what, see right in there? I reshaped all the way around that, and I I beveled that. See, that used to come right up into a, a big cup. I mean, it come right up like half an egg. 
and you see it's not now. It's it's more oval with a nicely formed edge. That'll that'll be smooth in here like it is now. It was very rough. They get hot spots when they're real rough, and you'll get detonation if there's a piece of carbon there that's on fire, burning, you know, or it's just playing a hot spot. Um, it'll make it fire prematurely before it should. Y you can run into that. You'll notice some saws do that just a little bit. Some of the, like, the 372 is one that did it. Uh, they wanted to do that pretty bad. Uh, some of the older steels did that. But you can smooth that. You just, it's real easy. You start out with some coarse paper and you rub it by hand. Uh, I'll tell you what I use. is When I do that work, I start right out with like 60 or 80 grit. Get it started to shape to like this corner here. And I had to move that bowl back a ways. Uh, that's not where that was. It's, it's that's a nice shape there. You can do saws are generally, if you can see in that cylinder, are fairly well shaped already. But there is a benefit to that. Plus, it's kind of fun to do because then you get your fingers hurting when you're old like me. But I wanted a brilliant shine on that. Could I have got that smoother? Yeah, that's all I needed to do. But if you noticed, I left it rough where the squish band is. I want this to flow up and around and stop right in here. Well, this stops flow. It, it doesn't want to just continue right on and flash around and down the piston. And your rings will catch it. But uh, I want it to fire more in the center right in that pocket. And, uh, yeah, these are angle plug too. Um, on the transfers... So you understand why that I open these up right here and cut that down right in here. I cut, see, that's that's generally on the 372 from here to here. It's down just a little. It's just a little step is all. Uh, I cut that right down to, to level in this area or just slightly below. See, this one's slightly below. And uh, we're... Where I got that from, for and uh, those of you who think this isn't right, don't do that. The transfers are too big. Then don't do it. I don't care. You want a saws run like mine? Then do it. But here it is where it came from. You can see it. For relationship to the size cylinder, the size of the transfers when you're done. They're much smaller on the chainsaws than that. Uh, we're going to do some mild port work. I asked some questions. I got good answers from you guys. We're not trying to increase what this 500's got because that's stupid. We want a more linear power is what we want. Uh, we're going to clean things up a bit. We're going to bring... These webs right here between your primary and secondary, we're gonna we're gonna blend them at about a oh forty degree uh, angle. You know, not sharp. That doesn't help you any. And we're gonna we're gonna clean this area here up some. Probably do a little work on the case where the, it feeds these transfers. And uh, but we don't have to do nothing down here with them transfers. They're they're plenty plenty big. We want to make this where that it doesn't just have that hard hit and it scares the crap out of you. We want it more like the Mako has a linear hit. It just pulls from the bottom like a freight train, and the more you turn the throttle, the more it goes. The chainsaws, this is the same thing for logging saws we do. We want more linear power. We want it smoother, uh, a little nicer idling, and uh, so we work out that intake. You guys have seen that a hundred times. Something that I do do, and I got it from the bikes, is I got to get it where you can see it good. Let me turn it around, maybe. Is you see them, them two little fingers on the top of the intake. Obviously, this upside down. You can see them. They're kind of 
almost headed toward being trenched. But odd as it may sound, you leave that center there alone, right in this area. You leave that alone. And you just you do it right there and there. Don't get up above your ring. You know, stay you know, don't get it where that you got free port from your piston swing seat over top of your piston. Be be careful with that, guys. Steels like it and the huskies. You'll notice the difference in the way they run when you do that. But where that really came from, now this is kind of a bad example. I should have had one of my older cylinders, but you'll be able to see it anyway. Uh, right in the bottom. See that little tab, that little tongue? Let me try to get this one. You can see it a little better. It is right there. See that? That's in the center. Well, if this didn't have reeds, that'd be high in the center and low here and here. This is where that comes from. Now, another thing is, it has a boost ports in these cylinders to feed the bottom of the case. See, obviously, we have a traditional intake. There's your intake fed reeds. They're not case reeds. So it feeds right here. But this hole right here and right here go down in into well it's it's actually yeah okay i got it wrong it's right here this hole and that hole comes right up through from that intake you see it see it there there's one there's the other that feeds a little fuel down into the bottom to help you understand that that's a nice thing to do okay if we were to try to do that with a saw, we are going to compromise something because you just don't have the room. But what could be done is you could bore, not your case, and you could bore them holes right there. Just there'd be a little slits is all, and you could do the same thing. You don't have to. I'm just letting you know what things that can be done. Uh, these bikes. Snowmobiles, chainsaws, you'll start seeing the same things. You'll be surprised you see the same numbers. Like, I like saws right around 100 for exhaust opening. I, I really do. 125 on your, uh, uh, that's degrees, you know, of opening from top dead center. 125 degrees where my transfer is open. I like that quite well. I don't mess with them unless they're way off. See, if you machine the base of your saw, you're dropping your intake, you're dropping your transfers, you're dropping your exhaust, you're building a compression king, but you're not making any power. You ain't. Yeah. Argue all you want. You guys that want to argue, my people don't because you're my family. You already know the deal. You watch the saws run. You ever notice these other builders? Don't really show your saws in the wood. They show them in little pine blocks or or whatever. They're, they're just cutting little cookies. We don't build cookie saws. We build legitimate, useful saws. And, uh, I'm not knocking them because they got their own way. And they they got a reason for doing what they're doing. It's because they like machining. I don't like machining. Do I machine? Yes. Sometimes you'll run into cylinders and certain saws that... Your squish band is so far off, you really got to take some off the base, okay? What's acceptable? This is something I've been wanting to bring up. What is acceptable distance from your piston to the, your head? And I'm glad I got this head right here because when your piston, it, this pretender's a cylinder there, how close do you want that piston to that head? Okay, that's your squish. You measure that with electronic solder, 62 thousandths works. And you just put it in your spark plug hole, get it where it comes in contact to, against the base of your cylinder, flip it over, and take a measurement. That's your squish. That tells you the distance that piston is to the head. If that's too far away, it, it doesn't fire exactly right. It doesn't have, it doesn't stay, the power doesn't stay, the explosion doesn't stay in the center of the piston like you want it. It goes right across it. And uh, these 
pistons that ha on these bikes that have these oval shape, you know, they're not really a dome, but they are, you know, see, they're oval shaped. We use a lot to have a pop-up. So you want, especially with a pop-up, have a little tighter squish. On most saws, 70 to 80 cc saws, 20 thousandths is a bare minimum. I like seeing them around 25. That's, that's fine. Because it, it won't fire uh, only in the center of the piston then. If it's 40, it's firing more across. Will it still run all right? Yeah, it will, you know. Now you get into some of the older, bigger saws that are getting 90 cc and, and one thing or another bigger, you'll see 60, 70 thousandths. Like some of the Max, you'll see that. Uh, the Pioneers, uh, you'll see, they didn't look at that as so important. Them saws run pretty good. Okay. Uh, I see one of you made a, a left in a comment, and I think it's trying to be funny, but you weren't. And I had to think about, I was like, well, gee, that was kind of a different thing to say. Here's what it was. I said, in the, in the CR500 teardown, that you'll see, surprisingly, the same numbers. And somebody had mentioned, well, you know, bikes run a much lower RPM, so no, that's not exactly accurate. Something to that effect. No, it is. It is. I'll tell you why. When you take a 70cc saw, you put it on a 100 blowdown, that thing will rev. Go to a 90cc saw, 100 degrees blowdown. I'm using that only as an example because that's kind of middle of the road for blowdown. It doesn't want to rev as hard because it's bigger. Like small V8s need a little smaller camshaft to get their optimum horsepower than a big V8. It takes a lot more cam, a lot more lift. If you put a 710 lift cam in a... Uh, 350 Chevy, you're going to be so cam heavy, it's ridiculous. It's not going to be the thing to do. It ain't going to run right. It won't, won't. You're better off with like a 550 left. But if you put it in a big block, it'll soak that freaking 710 lift right up. It loves it. It's a bigger motor, bigger relationship. Now, the way that applies to chainsaw engines is... Your blowdown, let's call that valve opening, because the piston is your valve. Bigger saws can have, to get the same RPMs out of them, you have to have a lower, it has to open quicker, lower blowdown number, where the blowdown starts. And uh, it's just like a big block needs higher lift, a little bit quicker opening off, you know, everything's measured at 50,000. I'm not going to get into all that right now. I, I was headed in a bad direction. I can already feel it coming. Uh, so, we're going to do the degrees on this cylinder and share that with you, what it is. This motor runs 8,000 with, let's say it's 100 at 8,000. <coughs> A 90cc saw with a 100 degrees opening is going to run 12.5, 12.8, something like that. A bike with a 100 degrees is going to run around 8,000 RPMs. Okay? To get more RPMs out of it, you have to raise your exhaust roof. A, de a determined amount, which, go back to other videos about doing that, there's a five-part series that I made a playlist so you understand every bit of that. It's already covered, so you just go to that if you got questions about it. So, the smaller your saw, the lower, the longer before that opens. Like, if you got a 50cc saw, except 106 for uh, opening. If you got a 40cc saw, except 112 if that's what it is, you know, some of them little small ones, they're a uh, little hard to really get into because they got an angle port that comes around, but you can see it. First ray of light, you already know all that. Uh, that stuff is important. I really, I'm trying to show you everything the way that I see it and the way I do it. And 
I'm trying to show you where it came from. It came from this kind of stuff. I know a lot of you don't like the bikes. You're not interested, and that's fine. I understand it and I, completely. I have a, a massive love for all two strokes, equally, honestly. You know, and don't think I ain't had a few chainsaws weren't big enough about ride like old Dave there, that red, white, and blue one. And uh, so that is really, really interesting stuff. But if you wanted to see a little more info about how these cylinders are built on bikes and saws, watch the bike video. You'll, you'll pick up a few things that I don't cover right here and it, because I, I just did it the other day. Spring is almost sprung. I'm out here with a t-shirt with no fire. I'm not cold. I didn't have to break water, the water trough up. There wasn't no ice in it. I woke up to 40 degrees. Oh, my goodness sakes. Uh, I just thought that was wonderful. We have, this winter has been a lot of extra work for us just to keep things going right. A lot of extra work behind the scenes. Um, it just, just, it gets a little brutal. We didn't have the deep cold we normally have. But we had other, we had a lot of ice to deal with constantly is what we had. And and that's, that's a pain right in the butt. Okay. Guess why that I was in a good mood? I still am. I'm loving you guys. My old one done past inspection this morning. It's a 97. I walked in the gas station. Of course, my, that sticker ran out in November. So it was the wrong color. We're just kind of waiting to see if I make it or not. I made it. Nobody bothered me. Get it back done. Passed the spectrum. Went through flying colors. As a 97, I keep the vehicles up. You know, they're, just, they're, they're work trucks. If I hit it with a piece of wood, I don't even see it. I don't even worry about it. I don't even care. If I, had a, I don't have truck payments. No. I've only had one vehicle payment in my life. That black truck that's in that horsepower, horse logging video, I bought that when it was just a few years old. I paid for that on payments. That's the only time I ever did it. What I do, you get periods in the year that you can sock away a couple hundred bucks a month or 300 or 500 or 50 dollars. I put that in a fund like I'm making a vehicle payment when I can. It's also an emergency slush fund, and believe me, we used it this year. We had bad expenses this year. Uh, when my vehicle dies, generally, there's enough money for me to go out and buy another used older vehicle, something decent. Now, when I give up on one, you don't want to buy it. There ain't nothing left. It's done. I get everybody's uh, attention there. I can put a vehicle I want to uh, uh, get rid of right out front for $50 and they wouldn't want it because it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out it's done. And uh, once in a while, I'll get an old truck that I really like a lot and it's starting to go to heck. I got one right now. It's a 95 Chevy uh, one ton. And uh, it's a heavy three car ton. It's the same as a one ton. And uh, after this ordeal with this uh, Vortec 454 giving me fits for too long, that other one was throttle body injected. I could work on that. I didn't understand what I was working. Now I know. I am about ready to put new floor pans and rockers on, throw a nice pair of fenders and doors on that. Maybe put a dumb box on it or a flatbed because the box is bad. Drive it. Drive it. I'm going to save that truck. I was just keeping it because I had a 44 in it with a heavy transmission, heavy rear end. I thought, well, I might need that someday. Well, I'll tell you what. Over here in the other bay, the big bay, and it's a big bay, believe me, I've got five years of I'm going to need that someday. Okay? Now, that bay is, I think, 34 foot long, 15 foot wide. I can't get my truck in there anymore. 
I'm getting rid of that. We're putting a little loft in because that's got 12 and a half foot ceiling. So on the other end, we're putting a loft in. We're going to get organized over there and get that. I'm going to need that someday. Is going, if I ain't used that in a year, I don't need that, do I? You know what the problem is? Maybe some of you guys want some of the parts you're going to see. I've got a lot of race parts, a lot. I've got stuff that you don't even find anymore sitting right over there because I'm going to need that someday. I'm not going to do it. I, I don't need that. I got crazy. I got crazy things, you know, really. And uh, we got a little 22R uh, Toyota motor that you need to see. Uh, it's kind of neat. We have a Roots supercharger on it with a holly carb. Yes. Now, that's not just one with a little tiny tiny rotary this is a big supercharger it sits on the passenger side of that motor and it's as long as that motor is and it's about yay high and it has a little intake and carburetor sits right on that for a and we got that on a running motor we had to have a distributor made to fire that it, we did i'll just wait till you see that one we build more than just saws and bikes i mean we build I don't do it as very much anymore. I used to build a lot of race motors for circle track guys and drag guys, and I and for myself because I used to drag race obviously, and uh, I used to play with the trucks and the, I've hit every motor hole on the East Coast I guarantee you, and uh, with my whole black truck. I mean I've been everywhere. That old black truck you seen in that video of horsepower horse logging, that has been from the furthest tip of Florida, not the Keys. All the way to Alaska. It has been all over out west. Uh, we had that one year. We went out and watched the Baja. We watched just a leg of it. I had that truck there. I've got pictures of that. If I can never find them out there by with it. And I played to every mud bog there ever was. I was an idiot when I was young. I bought that truck when I was 22 years old. I'm 59 now. It, boy, 59. 60's coming right up, isn't it? Yeah. You know what the problem is? Your body hurts, but your brain don't. It just keeps going. You're still young. Enjoy your days, guys. Enjoy them. Just feel the love for your fellow man. Feel Even if they're knocking you and they're being mean to you, look at it from their angle why they're that way and just accept it as the way it is. That's the only thing I can tell you. Okay, this is going to be it for right now. Stay safe and love your fellow man when you can. If you can't, walk away. Just walk away. Like, give him something to think about, you know, because love does truly win. It really does. Okay, thanks so much. Goodbye.